the family of a local teenager says she never would have left home without calling. It's praying for the best. I want my daughter home, man. And if she can't come home, I just want to know where she's at. These posters around the towns of Livermore and Jay beg anyone with information to come forward. Posters that Richard puts up every spring, never losing hope. Tell me what happened to my daughter. Just, just look me in the eyes so I can see her. An arrest in a nearly four-decade-old cold case thanks to cutting-edge DNA technology. The arrest happening exactly 39 years to the day. When Parabon Nano Labs used that sample to create 3D models of the suspected killer's face. It's heartbreaking. We miss her and we're going to find her. We're going to keep looking until we do. It's like a never-ending nightmare. It doesn't end. It keeps returning and it coming back. What if I told you a 71-year-old woman from Medford, Maine, seemingly walks out her front door, leaving her TV and lights on, as well as her phone and wallet on the table, and simply disappears. What if I said, despite four and a half years of searching, there's been no sign of Diana Esty? What if you knew her and the neighbor seemed to not get along, yet he's the one that noticed her missing? What if I said a close family member, the one that would eventually become the executor of her estate, urges Diana to be tested for dementia and Alzheimer's just weeks prior to her disappearance? in which she passes all tests. What happened to Diana Asti? Tonight, we speak with a relative of Diana's, Christine Rand, who despite no formal training, has opened her own investigation as to what happened to Diana. So if you want to introduce yourself, and then how you're connected okay. to this case. Okay, so um, I'm Christy Rand. I am from 15 miles probably south of where Diana lives, and I am somewhat related. Um, my fiance, John, his mother is a first cousin, and John spent a lot of time growing up with Aunt Doris, which would be Diana's mom. Okay. And um, so John's mom and Johnny have um, kept me like really in the loop over the years as to the dynamic in the family. And I was pregnant with our daughter when Diana went missing. Um, and so our connection really lies in that we had moved home from Massachusetts and I lived in the apartment above my mother-in-law's garage. Um, and when Diana disappeared, we were relatively close in town here and we, just like we heard about it nonstop in that sense through the family. And at the time, I guess that we all really thought that we were searching all over the property and that that was the theory that she had walked off. Um, and otherwise, I mean, I think everybody in town is with me in, in thinking that that something weird happened, but otherwise I didn't really have a connection to Diana other than the entire family I was with John and I was pregnant with our first child and it was all around us and we had just been moved home and that was it was just talked about and I have the personality type where over the years it was something I just wouldn't let go right. um I just asked <clears throat> about it all the time I find this interesting and so yeah okay good now you want to tell us about Diana like you know, tell us her name and then a little bit about her, if you know anything about her or what your husband's told you about her. Yeah, so um, Diana Esty, she used to go by Di as like a nickname. Um, as far as I know, Diana reminds me almost like I'd say of me, like she had good, good energy and everybody talks about her like she um, was independent and confident in that like she was a single woman never married and didn't have kids so um she was obviously at her age doing it herself and she took care of things and um she made stuff happen she was a go-getter and had big personality and was just a joy to be around um a really small woman i believe she stood you know like five foot one i don't know what the records say but she was a small woman yeah and yeah. She, you know, just a little cute thing. She always wore um, jewelry and accessories and bright colors and fun things. Um, she had been 
in North Carolina working and I believe she was there about 20 years. So she had grown up there in Medford. The house that Diana lived in where she disappeared was John's Aunt Doris's house. So I believe she was left that home by Doris, her mother, when Doris passed. And Di was in North Carolina working. And then in 2015, she retired and she moved back to Medford, Maine. Um, so she had only been in Maine about a year when she disappeared. Um, they had a lot of acreage land there. And even as kids, um, they used to explore and lots of trails. Do you I know, believe that she had a lot of cars. Do you know how many acres they had there? I think like 11. Okay, so a good sized piece of property. But I can't be sure of that. Um, I think that's information that we could get and it's probably like readily available. Yeah, I think but I'm a pretty price. sure it's a good chunk of acreage. And then of course, the land she has there, almost like to me, the driveway almost is like a road. I mean, it's not a road, but the driveway, if you were to follow it past Di's house, it turns into like a trail and it goes way out into the woods. And like her land would like butt up against just more land. Okay. It's Maine, you know? So it's, it's rural Maine. <laughs> so Diana was 71 years old when she went missing. She was five foot two inches tall and 95 pounds. So definitely a small woman. So she worked up until the point she was 70 years old before she finally decided to retire. Now, what did she do down in North Carolina? Um, she worked for the university there. I believe it was High Point. And if I'm not mistaken, she was like a registrar. Is that how you say that? Um, and she worked for the university. And I think as far as I know, she had been at High Point for the majority of those years. Now, you had mentioned that she's never been married. Do you know if she, I mean, she must have dated at some point along the way. And do you know if she ever had anything for a boyfriend once she moved up here? Um, I don't. And actually, just recently, I tore um, John's grandfather. Uh, John's grandfather passed away. And John's mom has all of his stuff. And I went scouring through his journals because he kept journals like I did. Um, to see if there was any mention of conversations and visits with her because I was interested. I know that um, as far as I've been told, there were men that were interested, just like a woman has men that are interested, but not anybody that anyone's mentioned significant to me. Okay. Just because I'm here, I'm going to ask Johnny's mom that question again, like for sure. So the other day I was asking her, um, because a psychic on TikTok mentioned to me that she thought it was like a gentleman suitor, like, like, a, like a, a man who had interest in her, maybe somebody she had grown up with in Medford who had seen when she moved home and, and maybe she didn't even know it cause she's 71, but that he had interest in her. And it could be, and you know, so I've been peeking at that theory as well. And if she turned him down or, or insulted him in any way. He could have been upset. And I meant to tell you, I didn't know if I told you this before. One of the people I had talked to had said like somebody like a caretaker with the yard and the trees. And they imagined him like taking care of the trees. Um, that same person on TikTok said that it was somebody with a leaf truck, a leaf cleanup crew possibly, or like that the leaf, that she, the vacuum from the leaf crew cleanup had to, had evidence or, do you know if she had her lawn cleaned up? Because if she went missing, and well, that's the other part of this case is we're not really sure when her last day at home was, right? Um, no, I, know I believe it was November 2nd. They had noticed that November 1st through the night into the 2nd, the lights were on all night. And that was the first indication to other people, as far as I've read even in the news articles, was that neighbors saw the lights on. And when do you, and what time of year do you actually have leaves cleaned up? It's usually the end of October, right? To get ready for the snowfall. Right. So it would have been just about brush cleanup time. One of my theories was to dig around with the Medford Town Hall to see who does that curbside cleanup. 
Um, just to, out of curiosity, where does that get dumped? Hmm. And I know um, that where I was going with that was that um, until John's grandfather was old, he did Diana's property. And Marcel, John's grandfather, passed away um, probably 18 months after Diana went missing. But he, around that time, was the person who helped her with her trees and helped her mow the lawn. How interesting. Um, and we could just kind of jump ahead into the case, but can you tell us, yeah. um, you know, from the first time, well, when's the last time somebody saw her? Wasn't it the end of October? Her brother had seen her? I haven't seen an actual official report of who the last person that saw her was and when they saw her. I believe that it says last seen October 31st and then it like skips to November 2nd. The report I believe came out that she was missing. Um, at the time, like my best recollection when, when this happened and I was pregnant, I believe it was like a conversation that John's mom had where she said a gentleman neighbor or somebody near that stopped by noticed that the lights and everything were on and she wasn't home. All right. And I, I don't have his name right here, he, but I don't either. And that he may have been the last person to see her, but I don't know of an official report of who it was. Of course, I keep in mind, like, my grandmother lives alone and does somebody see her every day when she goes to get the mail i don't know so i i it, we live in like rural maine too so if she hadn't been out and about i'm not sure i believe um, the reports say halloween day i can't find his first name but his last name is black um kent Kent Black, that's what it does. So he was the neighbor yeah. that supposedly, uh, or he's the neighbor that actually reported, hey, this is weird, the lights have been on all night. Um, and then she wasn't yep. home, right? Now, who yes. was the first person to go into the house? Do you know? I don't, because Kent, the neighbor, I believe he was a neighbor, um, he was the one that said, reported that the lights were on, the TV was on, and the door was unlocked, which makes me believe that most I, my assumption would be that the he went over noticing the lights were on all night and then checked the door you know mm -hmm. noticed it was unlocked and he did likely enter the home because he knows the tv was on all right you'd have to go in to probably notice that and he was probably looking for her i i would assume he yelled for her before going back home and calling someone now before her disappearance her brother was concerned about her health right he had concerns about her possibly her mental health or yeah um i believe that there were um appointments made for diana to have her um her evaluated i would say for like her independent living skills to see if she um could have been forgetting or if she could have if she needed help around the home or something on, along those lines. I believe I read that she was tested for dementia and, uh, and know, Alzheimer's, right? Uh, apparently I have it. Um, yes. <laughs> Alzheimer's. Yeah. And, and those both came back negative, right? That she didn't have signs of either. Correct. Um, and I believe that that's most, that's been written in the reports as well. I don't <clears throat> know the doc or like where she went to have that. And I, I would assume they verified that with those doctors. Right. That. Now, did, but, yeah, did the brother the, spend a lot of time with her? Like, um, I, I believe they had like regular contact. I know that she had regular contact with most of like her friends and family, like weekly and her brother lives a, a solid distance away. I mean, out here where we are in Maine, I, 
a 45 minute drive is like any direction anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, he did have like a drive. So I don't know that he visited all the time, but I know that he was one of like her closest people to have visit. Um, she had a handful of friends that she was close with, um, people she had grown up with in Medford and also that have moved outside of Medford now that she's still kept in contact with. And his name was Paul Esty, right? Yes. Did did anyone else ever get the feeling that she was like slipping or starting to lose it in any way? Not that I have been told at all. And I've asked that question a lot to see um, what was going on. Um, but no, as far as I know, she retired like on her own um she had moved home and of course that's a big job to um leave your job pack up your entire home in a southern state load a truck and organize moving services at age 71 to have your entire life moved to medford maine absolutely and also yeah. keep in mind she moved to medford but she still had her home in north carolina that was being maintained while she was oh. gone um, so you would think she was relatively good with her finances to even be able to keep two homes. And yeah, I, obviously, like we were saying, she's, um, 71 and, and lives alone. So she's hiring out people to do things around the house and around the yard right. that she can do. I know that when she moved home in 2015 and before she went missing in 2016, she had hired contractors that came and helped work on like the roof. I believe she got a brand new roof or had the roof repaired. Um, so those types of things, I don't imagine a person with Alzheimer's or dementia calling a repairman to fix their roof. Right. But that's just <clears throat> me. Um, right. And maybe and that, that's not the case. I mean, maybe you could be on top of those things and slipping and forgetting in other ways. Um, but as far as I know, she, she was, that also, um, that points to, you know, I've, I've heard the theory that maybe suicide was involved in this case, but why would someone commit suicide if they're having that work done in their home and, you know, they, they wouldn't do it. So I think you can kind of take that right off the table. Yeah. I, we, I think we've all talked about that too, because I try to keep like a really open mind with all of this now that I've become involved. Um, and I am really close with my grandmother who is older than Diana and lives alone. And I am sure that she is not looking forward to getting older, mm -hmm. but there's been no anyone in the family that's had any indication that Diana was like worried or depressed or um, feeling any type of way that she would have done something like right. to herself. Um, and also, she didn't leave her home in a state of some uh, that indicates that, you know. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. So usually, usually people who are on like kind of suicidal, like yeah. they just start letting things slide. They start not really caring, or they'll start like giving stuff away. Is is another one of the signs? Like, uh, but yeah, maintaining so maintaining your house, keep keeping up on it. Um, and I mean, what did did she, did she have anything, any recent trauma, like mentally, as far as like anyone, loved ones recently passing, or was it just going into retirement? Was that the only like sudden life change that she had had? Yeah, I mean, going into retirement is the only thing that I know of that was like a major change. Of course, going into retirement and then also moving. So right. she did leave North Carolina where she had been for 20 years and come back to Medford, Maine, which Medford, Maine, when she grew up is a lot different than Medford, Maine now. And I'm sure. I don't know what at her age that if that could be depressing to be like, nothing's the same. It's not how I remember it. But otherwise I've never even heard anyone say that she, um, and honestly, John's grandfather was alive when she passed and he was close with her, close enough that I was going through his journals 
I found out all these things I knew didn't know about him and there wasn't anything in there that indicated that he was worried about Diana. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of journals, you said that she had kept a journal. Do you know when the last entry was? I don't. I only know that the report indicates that it ended shortly before her disappearance. I believe was the quote, like shortly before. And you, you don't know what they said, like what was in that journal entry or anything. I that... don't. And I honestly don't know who has the journals. I've never, I, I haven't dug that deep to see about reading them. Um, I don't, I don't know what they said. So can you tell us about the search for Diana? Uh, what did the state police do or who, who has jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction? Was it state police or is it sheriff's department? I believe it was the state police and the sheriff's department was all over it. I don't, I, I know that now the state police has it and I know that there was immediately a large scale search happening out here. Mind you, we did have rain, I think in the days following her disappearance that kind of like, I almost want to say it was like a one or two day period that, that it did rain. And I remember us, only reason I remember that is I was sitting at the dining room table with my mother-in-law and we were discussing, could rain cover any signs of a struggle in like the driveway or on the road? We had thought for whatever reason, then our theory had been she was accidentally hit while getting the mail. That was just what we, that was like the only thing we could come I mean, up with. So we were worried that the rain could wash away any signs of scuff marks, like in the gravel, in the driveway or on the road. And so we were talking about it when it was raining that I, that we were thinking that I have, they looked there already. Did they already check that? So would there be photos of a shuffle before it rained? Right. And so I know that happened and that they, they did do large scale searches, um, all over the property, uh, with dogs multiple times. And even in years past, like, after the immediate first initial searching, um, following years, they have gone back with dogs and done searches again. And as far as I've been told, there's been no hits from dogs. I mean, she she walked those woods a lot anyway, right? You would have thought they would have been able to track she an did. old scent or something. And we all talked about as well, you know, that's a large property. And there are like old wells and things like that on old property, like th 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 there are. And so we had wondered, could she have fallen? Um, but no, I don't believe any searchers found any indication that Diana had very recently been shuffling around there. Mind you, it's late October, leaves on the ground. When you go, you make a path and, right. you know, and, and it also doesn't look like foul plays as far as, you know, robbery attempt or something like that. Cause there was nothing missing from her home. Correct. In fact, her, I believe her wallet and her phone was on the table. Um, and I know that yeah, that's if it was foul play, the, the rascals just left the lights on, right? Like that's about all they did. Right. Uh, and like you said, the TV's on, but like nothing's touched. Um, I don't believe there's anything like I, like we live in where we live, you know, if somebody had come in and they had done something, you think that something would be out of place. And of course her home is kept, um, not like somebody who is forgetting she, her home is up kept well. And so you would notice a mess or things out of place right. other than typical stuff like the lights on the TV being on. I believe now I, this is personal. Like, I don't know that this is true. This is the information I've been told that the coffee had been made and was there and that her mail had already been brought in. 
So then we're talking and like mid to early morning. She had already been outside because that triggers us because <clears throat> the theory of going to get the mail and somebody grabbing her. What we thought, okay, so the mail was inside. But um, when I was told that this was years ago and me and my mother-in-law go over these conversations repeatedly trying to remember, you know, like, did they say what day what the, that was on the mail? Um, I would, right. I'd suggest starting a journal if you guys don't already have one, just to keep um, the timeline. I have, I have like by date, like every. I think I saw that. Like <laughs> you actually yeah, sent that to I me. I have like, like beyond this, like it's all in notebooks, and I take videos like this, just like telling myself things that, so that like when I hear some psychic contact me about a leaf truck someday if that means something i might remember it i think that's important with these missing people cases that you know someone in the family is documenting things as they're happening in real time so that they can look back at it and they know exactly what took place versus trying to remember it, you know especially if you're talking to like a bunch of different people too right because <clears throat> someone might say something that might be involved that like maybe they didn't intend on saying that right. you know oh, well, might like, never be said again well and like like you know how the runaround goes when i was told that the coffee was made and the newspaper was there was that just added on to the official thing where it said the keys and the purse were home and then, right. like, some random friend in Medford is like, no, her coffee was there, her newspaper's it's, home. It's that and telephone like, it game you really played as a kid, you know, right. things got added on. So trying to keep track of, like, is that even accurate? Um, just down to even, yeah, all of it. You don't know what's not hasn't been released, and everything else, really, for us has just been collected information. Um, I, I know that we've talked previously but I have been in like a very deep rabbit hole on this search. Um, and some of it sounds so out there and some of it doesn't. Um, there's, I, I personally have a few people that I think could be of interest. What do you don't want to say? Um, so um, well, one story in particular sticks out to me is that she had a feuding thing going on with the neighbor. And is that and the person that reported her missing to begin with? I believe their last name starts with a B. I won't point I won't put this out on them. I think this could be a heavy accusation. But they are neighbors and Diana moved home in 2015 and they were very upset that her dog was using the bathroom on their property and had been arguing with her about it. And there was some sort of a verbal argument that had really upset Diana. Enough right. that people in the family all knew about it. Her friends and a, a really good friend of hers, Mary, is who how I know this story was that it bothered Diana. Hmm. And then... Shortly after, Diana's dog got run over. Oh. And. A hit and Diana, run, I presume. Yes. And Diana was also, once again, very upset. And there was a lot of speculation that the neighbor had potentially hit the dog. And now, of course, Diana's grieving her dog. And as far as I know, the son, there were two gentlemen that lived in that home, a father and a son. And the son, I believe, had a very bad accident. And like just, just after Diana died. And then recently the father also passed away. So neither of those people are with us. And oh, so so he died. The son died as well. The son died in, was a, that a, in an accident. I cannot recall if it was suicide or if it was a bad car accident. Okay. And then shortly, it was highly publicized 
his um, accident was publicized. It was a car accident. And shortly after, his, his father passed as well. Also another, like an accident. And um, because mm. of the, all those circumstances, there was a lot of discussion in the family, mostly like her close friends. Um, could they have had guilt? And was that right. relevant? Um, when I've been down all these searching paths, I've been just like asking any psychic or medium I can get my hands on, anything that they'll tell me. Um, and then I write it all down. And sometimes some of it sounds like it makes sense and some of it not. Um, and I ask every one of them about Diana's dog and that's it. I want to know about her pets. How, uh, how her long pets. before Diana uh, went missing did her, was her dog killed? I don't know a date for sure. I could probably find out by, you know, this was years ago. You think it was like within a month or a few months, maybe? I would say months. <clears throat> months. No. Uh, months enough that it had been discussed by us, you know, like, could they have been verbally arguing and stuff back and forth because she was convinced that they killed her dog? And could she have caught, could there have been like tension building for a very long time? When, when does, uh, when does hunting season start up there? November 1st, right? Yeah. So who say that? Or the, the first, first weekend after Thanksgiving or something like that last but weekend. Once and... again, that yeah. neighbor's property would be close enough that why did a dog not catch any of this? What do you mean? Like they oh, oh the, the search dogs. Yeah, yeah. For Diana. And if it was just the neighbor, you know, like how far would she have gone? It would, you know, I just have, have that theory that there would have been more signs or pick, something picked up from that. Do you know if the neighbor but, was, was a hunter? Do we know that at all? Or is that something we can I look don't. into? Yes. And I, I bring this up every time, just asking about her pets. All the answers I've ever gotten are like, no, nobody ever picks up anything. One, like they, some of them have picked up that she did have a dog or she used to have a dog. And one lady even knew something had happened to her dog, but not one of them indicated that anything about her disappearance had to do with the dog. Okay. And that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's a theory that we've played with because you have to keep thinking about all of what could it's speculation. Right. Absolutely. Now, does she still have the home in North Carolina? She does not. Um, I believe in the last two or three years, her brother sold the property in North Carolina. And I believe that that sale needs to be like approved through probate of some yes. kind. Yep. But the property in North Carolina has been sold. Um, so she doesn't have that now. Um, but she did when she passed. So is he so the how, how, executor how long, of her estate? Oh, sorry. How long after uh, she went missing did he try to sell her house in North Carolina? I think it was a couple years. She would okay. be five, missing five years this... This November, right? November. Yeah, I think it was yeah. 2018 is what I read that the house sold. Yeah. Originally sold, but like you said, it's in probate now for... Because they haven't and declared her dead. It is still in probate, and I also don't know at what point they do something as far as like declaring Diana to be deceased so that her estate could be closed. I believe on another case that we work on, I believe it, they said it takes seven years before you can try to get someone declared dead. I I'm not 100% sure. It's a timeline, but I'm not certain on <clears> what <throat> it is. So is he the executor of her estate, the brother? As far as I know, he was the executor of her estate and like also something like a power of attorney, which would allow him to get her evaluated for the Alzheimer's and dementia. That's yeah, that's kind of that where I was be, going. 
you can't really just do that. So my assumption would be he was also like a power of attorney or a medical power of attorney of some kind. Um, maybe next of kin of, or I don't know how that works, but yes, he was the closest relative, um, that she had. Now I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but it seems, you know, a plausible theory would be that if you have your sister, uh, found to have some kind of mental issues or, or, uh, ah, uh, see the thing I have Alzheimer's and, and dementia. <laughs> dementia. <laughs> Then he would become the executor of her state, the power of attorney, because she may not be mentally sound to, to control her own things. So, Correct. I mean, could that be an angle with this case that maybe he's involved? I think it's my pretty my, possible. My personal opinion would be um, that anyone who sees to benefit from Diana being missing or deceased could be a person of interest. And just like we talked about the neighbor, I would be dumb to say that somebody who was going to inherit all of Di's estate because she didn't have children and wasn't married, um, I, would, I would be dumb to say that that couldn't be a suspect. And I would also be dumb to say it's not suspicious to take someone to be evaluated, to be able to say that they are like not competent to make their own decisions. And then when that doesn't go in a certain direction, they just go missing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that so honestly sounds like something out of like a Lifetime movie. <laughs> And, and I don't know their relationship at all. I mean, you would know more about their relationship. Um, and, and I'm sure and you're... I don't know a lot about their relationship. I poked at this a little bit with my mother-in-law asking, like, what was the dynamic growing up? Mm -hmm. Because they were all kids, not at the same time, Di is older than my mother-in-law, but that that generation of kids, what was that like? And... Um, she said she does not remember Paul at all. Like, doesn't remember him being around and doesn't really know. She couldn't go either way to be able to say what what their relationship was like. Okay. Um, I, th I think he's like 67 or something I read. Or at the time that she went yep. missing. So that would put, her, put him four years younger. So maybe maybe she didn't know him if she's Diana's age. Or you said she wasn't right. her age, though. No, she's not. I, she's still in her 50s. Oh, okay. So she's younger. All right, so just cut my commentary out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then the... The relationship, as far as I know, is... is let's put it this way. John's mom is a first cousin... And mm -hmm. she lives 20-ish, 25 minutes away. And no one ever contacted her, ever. And asked her about Diana or anything. Have you spoken to Almost the state like police? no other family even existed. But the brother. That, yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm seeing online. a lot. She said, the police, nobody ever contacted me and asked me anything. If I knew anything about, I would have told them, you know, my dad helped her and dad lived. And at the time, John's dad, grandfather, her dad was still alive and lived in LaGrange, which is actually closer to where Diana was in Medford at the time. And um, nobody ever contacted him. And he was friends with Diana. And so we've all thought that was relatively odd just in that sense that, um, you know, another, nobody wanted them to talk to us. another angle you may want to look at is if, if the brother or the neighbor have any relationships with the police department, like any relatives that work there or something that would not necessarily do a cover up, but maybe steer the, the inv uh, investigation in another direction. Yeah. Like a cover up. Like a cover-up. <laughs> like a cover-up. Um, 
Now, I don't know that you'd have to have like a personal relationship with the police department to kind of like steer them in the other direction, really, other than just being the closest relative and telling them anything. Yeah. And in our case, it's that um, Diana liked to go for walks down the road and on the paths and that she must that she's gone. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like, I, it, it seems more plausible that she's was was taken from the house by, you know, like someone that she knew. Because no one the neighbors said that they heard any screaming or anything like that. And mm -hmm. like how I'd imagine at the age of 70, she would know better than to get into a stranger's can van because they say of candy, right? Like yep. <laughs> it, it seems more likely that someone had stopped by and said, Hey, let's let's go for a drive, we'll go well, here or there. And like we've talked about in other conversations. She also wasn't likely to go for a ride and leave the phone and, and the TV on and the purse on the counter and not bring the house keys right. and not lock up. And that wasn't even like the norm if you were going for a walk. So like say she right. had gone on a walk, like we've searched the property and like there's nothing there, but let's say she did go for an extremely long walk way out in the woods. Right. <laughs> It's not typical to leave your front door unlocked and your TV on and all of your stuff going when you do that. Um, it's, and she wasn't one to do that, which I think is where the actual initial like kind of alarm came from that she wasn't in the house because she wasn't one to just like leave everything on and the door unlocked and if right. you went for a walk, you locked the door. Right. You know, if you have your friends stop by and you're not home, but your car's home, you want them to know that you've gone for a walk or something, so you leave the door locked. So when your friend stops by, they know she must be for a walk because her car's here, but her, she's locked. You had mentioned right. that, that she may have multiple cars, right? I did. Um, well, one thing that I can just say to be true is that there is a car parked in the driveway in all the satellite footage like on the google earth if you google earth pro it and scroll through the years of satellite footage there's a car parked in that yard all the time and it's been there even since diana went missing the car was there and then i think just recently i noticed um the 2018 images it's gone now um but so she did have a car and she also drove like a truck like a bigger vehicle um and she was a woman she did it all herself <laughs> and then um, at, back in the day, the barn there on the property had cars in it, old cars in it. Um, and that's just like family information that th they've ta told me about was that um, Aunt Doris always had cars or something like that. And so there were cars there on the property in the barn. Um, and I'm not sure if Diana honestly got rid of a lot of that stuff or if some of it still remains there. But yeah, she drove. Now, who lives in the house now? Is it being rented or is another family member live there? Do you know? I believe it's empty. And um, I believe Paul is like performing the upkeep on the house and paying the bills. Um, heated and like all that type of stuff to keep the house running um, until Diana comes home or until he could access the estate and reimburse himself the expenses for keeping her house up going these years right she's gonna have a big bill when, he, when she comes back right so when she comes back she would have a really large bill or um when he gets a death certificate he would be able to reimburse himself for the large bill huh it's yeah. a strange case for sure it is a strange case, and, and um, that's legitimately all. All that, all anything that's official about it, though, right? Is is that she went missing, but there's not even like an actual date or time that she went missing. Um, no. So as far as I know, like the only <laughs> official things is like she was reported missing on this day and went missing in 
any of these number of days like we don't know when yeah. and that otherwise like not ruling out foul play but it's suspicious circumstances and no clues um no signs of a struggle at the house no signs in her journals that she was depressed um no signs like um in the house like that she had gone even packed and left nothing you know her vehicle's home and yeah, yeah. i mean i i don't know how to see this personally any other way than like there's probably foul play involved because of everything you just described like she's uh yeah, sure she's a, a bit of an older lady but like she wouldn't have left the house in, in the condition it was yeah. in um no one heard any sort of struggle stuff but it seems like someone that she knew picked her up and like they drove off and she just never came back that's that's exactly. the way it sounds to me but if if they drove off she would have brought her pocketbook and her phone i would think and unless Not it was a, hey we have to go right now something's up or, sort of deal or i i know what so you're gonna say i'm 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 also playing off things like i've been i've heard so many things from like psychics that some of this like what i think now plays in off of that so i'm biased in that sense but i thoroughly believe in the theory that she did not get in that car willingly there was an altercation before she left the house and probably in the driveway um i think somebody came to her door and knocked at the door she wasn't expecting them and she answered the door and they stood outside and they spoke and they th threw her in the car and right. there, that's why there's yep. no signs in the house like she was leaving because she just came out as someone pulled in the driveway to say hi to her and yep in that altercation in the driveway 90 pounds well that's the thing too right you said she's she's five one and 70 years yeah. old like and it only took a second to put her right in the back of the cars so, or or whatever. well here's the and she was gone. here's the other thing if they had any sort of weapon there wouldn't have been a struggle you know she would have possibly just been willing to get into the vehicle right so I really believe, um, I've been told by three different psychics that somebody came to her door and they see her kind of reacting like, like, surprise, somebody's here. They've knocked. It was definitely somebody who knocked and she greeted them at the door. Hello. And out into the driveway she went. And right. all three of those people end with like a completely different theory um none of them lead me to the same place but all three of them recall like a very similar beginning that somebody knocked on her door and that brought her outside to talk yep. and that was why the tv's still on and the keys and the purse are there and stuff because you're not going anywhere um right. and that somebody came to visit and you know that could be inaccurate you know the brother could have come to visit and been there and um my hottest trail which <laughs> my hottest trail leads me to that none of that was how her home was left those things were brought back to her house and staged yeah. So she to make it look like she car. went for a walk. Yes. She had gotten in the car to leave the home willingly. And then after the accident happened, the person returned to her home, unlocked the door, went inside, turned the TV on, turned the lights on, left her purse and stuff back where they go on the counter and left. And Which is how, how how close how close are her it, okay so two things was it frequent that she got guests first of all and secondly uh did her neighbors like ever pay attention to if if anyone was ever there well so like would someone have noticed if if there was another vehicle that that had pulled right. in like they might have recognized so. it's not their, her own I don't think so. Partly because the way her road works, like you come in up her driveway and where you're like parking is almost behind the house. 
you come up okay. in the driveway and turn. And so you're parked out, out back, really, like where her everyday parking space was, was a little a distance from the road mm -hmm. because her house sits back. And then also the vehicles are kind of parked on that back side of the house. So I don't know. Um, I try to think of it as like similar to where I live. And unless you happen to be outside and saw a car pull in across the street or could hear them talking or... I wouldn't notice if, right. and I don't, I, I haven't heard any neighbors come forward and say anything like they saw someone. Of course, like we know investigators wouldn't release that to us if they knew somebody had been there. Um, yeah. But nobody's ever mentioned to me that they saw anyone coming or going. Have you um, or anyone thought of creating a Facebook community group, uh, you know, searching for Diana or something? I was just thinking about it the other day, just recently, like since talking to you and stuff, wondering if like there should be a Facebook group. Um, it definitely can't I, hurt. I think, I think part of the reason I think I haven't is just it hasn't seemed like at this point in the search, we've it's gone on so long that there's like a whole lot of people interested in the search. And that could be just me because I'm, I don't know enough people. Um, but I, then also because a lot of like what I've been doing has felt really like I started literally other than just asking my mother-in-law, like, what's going on with that, Diana? Like, when I see her, I didn't really have like a major investment in this until uh, I was contacted randomly out of the blue. Who contacted and you? I don't know if um, a girl named Randy contacted me. And to tell the story in full, like a short version, I was at my mother in law's house and I said something about I had talked to um, somebody who reads auras. And she said, out of the blue, I told you about that psychic who called me, right? And I was like, no. What are you talking about? And she says, I told you about the psychic who called me about Diana, didn't I? And I was, no, you didn't. And she went on and says, a woman called me last year. So a little late to tell me about it. She goes, a woman called me last year. She must have gotten my number from someone in town. And she told me this big, long story about Diana. And I sat there at the table, nine o'clock at night. I wrote every detail down that she could remember. And I spent the whole next day being like, that's interesting. And I was reading over it, trying to find, how do I find someone similar to a, because I'd never considered talking to a psychic or a medium or anyone like that. And I suddenly was like, how do we find someone else? Because that was interesting information. And out of the blue at like 10 PM, I got a message from a girl who is married to someone that John worked with at the Texas Roadhouse 10 years ago. And she has So close seen... connection. No, I do, have <laughs> no idea who she is. She messages me on Facebook because she saw my comment, an old comment on a Maine State Police Diana post. She saw it and she knew who I was because of the Facebook world and John. Right. So she said, I'm going to reach out to her. And she messaged me out of the blue. And she said, like, quote, I'm going to sound insane, but I recently made contact with a spirit named Diana. And she wants me to tell you a whole bunch of stuff. And we stayed up for I was at this point shaken because I couldn't believe the coincidence in the 24 hour period of that happening. Yeah, that's and odd. I couldn't imagine how this girl found me today after I've spent all day on that psychic kick that my mother-in-law said last night. But I, she and I talked for about two hours and she went into extreme detail about Diana and what happened to her and what she sees. And is this and the one that told you over by the airport? It is. Um, I will say that we went back and forth and went the two hours. I let her tell me anything she could possibly say she was getting from Diana. She's saying she's communicating with Diana. I'm asking questions. 
and she gave me a whole lot of information um just like snippets and combos of like colors to be looking for directions on what stuff looks like and of course signs of like a struggle because like she says like punch to my nose and i fall and then run scared run duck and then flat to the back of the head and it's all black feels like wood like a baseball bat and we went back we we really dug i dug into this with her and this was in february and i drove to the general area that she's saying she had it literally in google maps you can even see the article of debris that she's indicating she believes diana is hidden and she says with a satellite image that's where you need to go and i drove up there in february trying to figure out is there any way to get there how do i even get out there and i could not figure out how any of it added up and then um the second time I drove up there, one of her indicators kept being yellow, that I will know my way when I see the yellow. And eventually I have found that there are yellow gates that lead to a path that leads directly to, I won't say directly, but she indicated that um, they stopped there and he in a panic of course not his age was not using a satellite he took a trail that had a, a clear marker and like with a hunting brain took all left hand turns until the trail ended and he felt he was far enough away from and then he hid her and then knew that all right hand turns would get him back and i have found the trail that takes all left hand turns um, she even went as far as telling me that while I was searching, I was going to come to water and Diana is insisting that I need to wade through it or take a boat and perception is key perception, boat, um, water, like I'm wading through it and the trail leads me directly to a beaver dam that I currently, I've been eight times now. And Please. I cannot cross the beaver dam. Now you found some items out there as well, right? We did. Um, we, another great coincidence, um, found shovels in the area. And I know that I've kept, recounted this story with you before, but we found the shovels in that area. And at that same time, my phone was in my car. And when we returned back to my car, um i had messages like just a thread of them coming in from the psychic like she knew where i was and i won't go into all the details but the scary the the, the key was that she had messaged me and she says i'm not sure if i'm in front of you or if i'm behind you or if i'm with you now but diana says you have turned around and you are going back and she is angry because perception boat wade through the water and she says you've turned around and we did we had turned around and she says um suddenly she says all in caps like success 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 diana says you found something you found something at the beach at the water and you found something and when we got back to the car and read those messages that was when we felt like the shovels that we found buried underneath some brush piles could have been significant wow now have you Did talked you know, to the sheriff's department about this yet i have <laughs> um i made a call to the state police with the whole gist of it many months ago um as of right now, I don't have like any com like I don't have concrete information that indicates Diana was there. Right. That's uh, now this is just me. I, I don't typically buy into the, the psychic stuff, but like Jeff's a firm psychic believer. 
No, I'm, I'm really and not. But that's that's some weird stuff. I I have had other things that were like not accurate at all. I found it super weird that one woman told me it was like a a caregiver, um, somebody who worked on the trees and the rubbish and the leaf piles and stuff. And then a totally different lady, they do not know each other, told me with confidence it was like a leaf clean cleanup crew that swept up the the evidence. Those are two weird things to, for two different people to make up. Yeah. And then like for me, I genuinely went on that airport search just because the weird conversation with her felt like I had to. I never thought that we would find anything she was talking about. And when we found the trail, I was with our cousin Mindy, which would be another relative, um, John's uncle, another first cousin, his daughter, Mindy. She's a little bit older than me and we had gone out there looking and we walked for hours, not finding any of the right trails, any of the right places. And then we did. And when we did, there, every single turn and step was like exactly as that she had told us it would be. Wow. That's so weird. To the point that I've been out there almost a dozen times and I'm going to go forever until I can cross that beaver dam. There will be nothing that I, I could be 50 and I will still be determined to check that. And I will say that Diana went missing in October and people that live in the area have now, because we've been there enough, I know that the beaver dam does dry and in the fall, it's very easy to cross. There's no water at all. It is a dry skitter trail. It's a skitter trail. And later in the year, around the time like Diana would have gone missing, you wouldn't have any problems crossing there. Wow. Perception. So right now, I can't. So did any of these psychics ever ask for any money at all? Nope. Good. No. Nope. I um, was able to find the original person that had called my mother-in-law. Um, she lives here in town and she was willing to speak with me. She's much older. She's about Diana's age. And I had to use a landline phone number to contact her. And I had to leave a voicemail on her landline describing who I was until she called me back. And, um, and then I had to actually drive to her house because she didn't drive to meet her and to get the information again. I wanted the original information that had been called into my mother-in-law to be recounted to me from firsthand. Um, and everything she said was, I mean, it It'd be hard to make up some of it. Right. You know what's strange is you don't really hear much about this case. You know, you and I had talked about that before. But yet here we are, most of our podcasts that we record take about an hour and then we're done. And we've if that Yeah, we're on one hour and fifteen minutes already. Yeah. Um and it seems and like there's like, so much more really, to this. And but like really like how difficult was this to make happen? Like, I don't know you and, but nobody else is doing this for Diana. Right. You know, the only people that are, are coming together to organize some sort of information for the public to, to try to even, even navigate like researching theories of what could have happened here that we, we don't, I don't even hear about it. I mean, there are people locally who still don't even know about it, that it ever even happened. Yeah, you that's know? bizarre. And you say like that case is still open. There are people who are shocked, like, oh, they never found her. They look at it like every other like elderly runaway case where an elderly person goes missing because they got lost driving or they walked off from a nursing home and they genuinely expect it to be closed. Like most people don't even know that this had never had closure and Diana is still missing 
and her case is not closed. We don't know who who did it and what happened to her. We don't even know where she is to give her like a pro proper burial. She's never right. even gotten a funeral. Yeah, that's sad. Um, and if so, yeah, I think it's it's dip. It's sad that it's like there are more ways to like make info happen for her. Um, I mean, I think it's sad that like I called the state police and. Um, I really thought they were gonna like jump right on that. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought that the, that guy was gonna be like, thanks for calling that in, Christy. Can you meet me at the airport tomorrow and show me where that is? I'd like to get that shovel and collect it as evidence to see if there's any sign of Diana on that shovel. And I would like to go see the spot that you're telling me that you think Diana could be hidden. I think that's interesting. That like, like me and really, my with, friend are with as go much out money, the woods. with as much money as the, you know, government spends on fruitless things, uh, why couldn't they afford to have a dog and a guy go out there with you and and take a look around? Right. Blows my mind. I mean, I just, it just genuinely intrigues me that like not one person was like, okay, let's follow that because we've had no tips on Diana in six years. You know, why are we not like just at this point exhausting all options, but maybe there's higher profile cases to be had. She's 71. I don't know what the reasoning is, but maybe I would like, I would love to see um, any type of information like that could even give us any closure here to be able to, I mean, even to get some sort of official announcement from the main state police with where they are in the case. Absolutely. Now yeah, that's something that I think that families should be like afforded, right. Is, is some sort of summary or update about any of this stuff. Cause it happens a lot in the state where someone goes missing and, a case will stay cold for years and years and years and they get absolutely no information about it. There's nothing, not even a, like nothing has changed. Like and even now, that would be something to, to, to family members is like, you know, this is, this is as much as we have. Um, but they, they, they stay super tight lipped. I think to the point where it's unnecessary with some of this stuff that, you know, for whatever reason, they're, they're concerned about getting out too much information but it's like there's got to be something that you could give. Well, and you would think that there's to, to literally not even up, be able to update the public enough that, you know, why are we not every Sunday night covering like the open missing persons cases within our state on, on all the local news channels? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it that every person in town, like I literally could probably say that if I walked around my town, which is not far from Medford, and and handed a flyer of Diana to like every person that I saw come in the store today. Maybe one in 20 would know who that was. Right. And I think that's that's odd that yeah. that that we don't have like more publicly made information that's kind of like that this is still a, a thing. Um, just in the sense of, are we really only searching Diana's property at this point? I think that that's confusing to me, even that we've done so many extensive searches of the land around Diana's home. Um, we aren't being told like any other places that maybe people could be looking. Right. We just don't, there's not, that's it. And like, we, like I had asked you, I'm like, am I allowed to go walk around on her property? Because is anyone looking for her anymore? Good question. So, you had mentioned the Facebook page. I think that's a great idea because a lot of times people feel more confident when they can, you know, maybe send you a message through Messenger than to be more open about it and speak publicly. But they they have a little more confidence on the so, keyboard to talk to so you. Diana needs a Facebook page. I think you should. For and sure. We have, I mean, we have a small audience, like forty four hundred people follow our page, but we'd certainly be willing to. Share that on our page to try to get some more information out there for you as well. Yep. Yeah. I will absolutely. say um, that at this point, um, like a page of some kind would be wicked cool. Um, Emily and I are spending like a lot of money on like essential items like bug spray. 
<laughs> and we are straight up like packing our knapsacks with our um, blade and our pepper spray and like a half gallon of water and like safety mechanisms because we're genuinely like walking in the woods in no man's land, like following this because we believe like something needs to be coming of it. And if no right. one else is gonna like follow all these random tips, like I don't care who they come from. So like my tip that comes from a psychic, like my mom was the one that said this to me. She's like, how do you know she's a psychic? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And she's like, God damn it, Christy. Like her dad could have killed Diana and he got drunk last night and told her about it. And that's how she knew all that stuff. And she, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. who says they're made, like, you don't know when somebody's saying something to you, if they're, tr if it's the truth. And so she's like, you know, how do you, how, how do you know when somebody's telling you a tip? whether they're saying they made contact with a spirit or someone told them that like you don't know how they got that information like you just don't i'm not an investigator and so she's like i think anybody who contacts you and says oh you should be checking this area because i believe she could be here like that could be coming from like a more rooted place mm -hmm. and just the same way that like her good friend was convinced it was the neighbors. Another good friend is like pretty sure she got like that it was another person in town and like the, the landscaper brought her to Millinocket. And it was like, did you make that up? Or do That's you a... know the landscaper? Do you know whose you know land I mean? that is that you're you're cutting through uh <laughs> yellow gates on? Is that it's public property public? it is okay so it is um so it abuts pub it abuts homes on like a main road and it is public access trail to like for basically to fishing spots along the river and eventually the property meets the airport so you would end up on not public property if you went too far otherwise it's like all um like like woods and fishing land it's actually the same location that nicole cable was left in mm -hmm. not the same location but you're using the same parking lot to get there wow and nicole cable was dumped on a different trail um but that was one of the things that the psychic actually said was he chose that space because he knew there was trail there and it had been used for that before everybody knew that you could park down there and walk and it was rural and no one would see you um but he thought he had walked really far until like it, the trail ended it's actually not that far it's like 0.4 miles <laughs> but like in the wow. woods in a on a skitter trail it feels pretty far right and carrying potentially carrying a body or dragging a body of some sort yes and like the reasons that i've been piqued by this is because she very clearly described it like um hunting trail something that like would be familiar if you went hunting or fishing if you went and did those things like you'd be comfortable walking out there but it's like clearly designated trail she was like there's nothing in my way i'm not walking all over things she says it's like rough getting in there and then once you're in it's just clear open and that's exactly what it was like for us like it was a little bit of a struggle for the first maybe 30 or 40 feet of trail and then you come to a tree stand and it's just all wide open like six foot wide skitter trails all through the woods wow. and it would be easy to get lost out there which she had said and she had said that's why somebody with like a hunting background did all like left 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 so that when they came back they wouldn't get lost they'd know exactly how to get back so, so that's what we did was left. This is something that Jeff and I had talked about potentially doing in the future, but what if, you know, we get together a, a search party, you know, within our page, we'll post looking for volunteers. You set up a date and a time where everyone can go there and meet, um, 
and maybe even get the state police or sheriff's department involved. Let them know that this is what we plan on doing. Want to let you guys know before we go do this. So then maybe that kind of either force their hands so they go out there on their own and, and look around. Or at least they know what we're doing. Well, like, my big thing, then, what I had said to you was, my big thing right now is, like, once I get out to the spot, like, what am I supposed to do there? Unless something is plain as day, visible out in the open, I am not equipped to identify where human remains are buried or potential evidence. I'm not. Yeah, so you I need a cadaver dog. Of something, not know it. Right. So you'd have to have help and resources. I haven't really gone that far into it because I feel like in order to get people out there with me, I have to be able to get out there. But so, like you're saying, if there were was help involved, then, you know, you've got, you have somebody that has a canoe or whatever, and we get out there. Right. And of course, it would be like a breeze to access it from water. It's like right down the road from the boat landing. It's, it would be like way easier. I just don't have a watercraft. <laughs> so I'm going the hard way. Watercraft. Is, you know, <laughs> well, I've been considering all options. Literally, it was like Walmart. Blow a paddle and boat. And <laughs> yeah. A you know. paddle boat and a canoe, a kayak, a wave runner. Like, a, like, what are the options? Julie Jones lives up there in Bangor, and she trains cadaver dogs. I guarantee she'd be willing to help us out and go out there. I, I feel like I can't put that theory to rest until I've finished the trail because, because of the accuracy of what came out of it. I feel like I can check that off once we have done due jo like justice to that search. And from there, I have like a completely other theory. And I am like so ready to go up to Millinocket. I'm looking for a brown camp with red shutters that has a sign that says like a play on words like bear in or like something about bears on the sign to the camp. And there are bears in the yard and they use it for like bear, like what if you were to go hunting, you know, somebody took you on like a, like a trip, like a guide and they were yeah. going to take you on a guide trip. That's where I'm looking for. Have you and researched that online? <laughs> yes. Okay. I thought yes, you had. I've researched it online. Um, <laughs> I'm not certain that I found the exact place yet, but if that tip, if that psychic was correct, um, Diana says that people will not find, will not catch me if I go there, and that no one comes to visit her. That she is weighted and that no like i would be fine to go out there and search and i have not been able to figure out any other accuracy to any of it i've literally you know like I, and it makes you realize how big of a state we're in yeah it really really has made me realize you know the like the depths of the main forest and um, what being missing or exposed, like disposed of in the woods would mean. Um, that one trail to that one place has like exhausted us for months. And um, that's one place in like thousands and thousands of acres, you know, so still like a lot that we could be doing. I know that we discussed, I don't know if, what kind of dogs they brought on that search of her property. And were they like tracking dogs for her scent or were they cadaver dogs? Right. And I think there would be a difference there. Like, and I don't know. And I couldn't find it in any of the articles for like confirmation if they used both or one or the other. Yeah, strange story. I would story. love to know, um, like, what Paul's take on this is. So if you are going to attempt to speak with Paul, like, I'd love to know what his take is on all of it. And then, like, also, like, does Paul have any other friends or relatives that, like, he thinks might have insight on this? You know, like, my mother-in-law is like, 
a wealth of information just in in that she's older than I am and she's more close to the age and like she's good friends with Mary who was good friends with Diana and like you know um would Paul recommend other relatives you know would he tell you you know yeah maybe maybe her friend Mary might be willing to talk to you I think the brother has done something and I do. I think the brother has done something. There is no other person that would go out there and kidnap a 71 year old woman for what? Yeah. I mean, what on earth could a 71 year old woman say or do to you that would cause you to harm her. She's not on the property. She didn't go for a walk because everything was left out in the open. And who else has to benefit from anything happening to Diana? Uh, other, other than, than like brother. a random, like a, a random, uh, like a crime of opportunity where it's, you know, and, someone driving by and hey, we'll, we'll snatch this old yeah. lady and see if she's got any old money hidden somewhere and we can take it. And then and, didn't go through anything in her house. Mm. And like right. didn't even take anything that was valuable, and they right. didn't even take the money out of her wallet. Could or be like a, Israel Keys just killed people for the sake of killing people. So who knows? Well, and like yeah, I mean, I I just I believe that there was like a motive with money involved. That Diana had money, and Diana had a good life set up for herself in some way, and maybe. I don't know if he wanted to borrow if someone wanted to borrow money and she wouldn't let them or if they just wanted her whole sum of money but i just can't see another reason um she didn't have enemies she didn't have people that would go after her so what and at this point the police not having anything else to go on honestly makes me think that that's their suspect too is there it's anyone like, does anyone else share your theory that you've spoken to yeah. as far as the family. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the family members yes. feel the same way. Other people that know Diana have also voiced concern that someone close to her could have done something. That at this point in an investigation that has lasted this long and in search efforts that have gone on like they did, any theory that any of us had that she had fallen in the well on a walk is like gone. Like we really spent a lot of time thinking that she had like gone on a walk in that property out back and like fallen into an old well or something. And that's why you couldn't find her. That theory has like long passed. I don't, I think that they did enough searching and brought in enough resources with the police and search parties and dogs that like that theory has now passed for most of us. She's not on the property. And at this point, well, and like you said, yeah, I mean, why it's the closest 11, 11 acres is not, is not huge when it comes to searching for a body. And like at this point, like my theory is this too, is like if her brother is the only closest relative, like why is he not creating a Facebook group? Why are we right. letting this go to like be forgotten? Why why is it taking like me coming out of nowhere doing this to like make anybody be like it's not that's how I look at it. Like, if my brother went missing, I certainly wouldn't just suddenly, like, oh, well, we searched the okay. property, and now eventually we're just going to let it go. I, I would be on po Facebook at, like, you would be doing something, and I don't see that happening. I mean, I've even gone as far as, like, if you go through, and I, like, I don't, if you go through his Facebook, you can see, like, any person that messages and says like i'm sorry to hear about your sister diana he responds like he literally didn't hear the statement hi paul how are you i hope you had a great holiday i'm sorry to hear about your sister diana and he's like yeah it was a great holiday I hope you had a good holiday too yeah that's bizarre like we're not even sharing her 
missing posters anymore on Facebook. You know what I mean? I just think the whole thing sets it up to like a sour taste for a lot of people. And that's a heavy accusation. So I think that puts everybody in like an awkward spot because we don't really have any other reason to think anyone specific did it. Right. We'd hate to blame right. anyone if they're not involved, but I mean, yeah, honestly, like, honestly so this awkward. is all speculation, but I mean, it does yeah. make sense. Arkham's and razor. Other theories that could make sense, like you said, you know, like she could have gotten her mail and some random person and that was it. And like, but that's less likely. But, and like we've said, like, the town of Medford was rocked by this. Like, we don't live in an area where things like this happen. Where women, children, people in general just go missing. Like, that was a scary time for this area to think that somebody had gone to Diana's home and taken her. And something, like, something had happened to Diana in Little Medford. And, and that's the thing, is, is if you hear about um, like someone going missing, it's usually not like someone in their seventies. And right. from the sounds of, like she's, and if they do, we've been over this, like it's because they've wandered off from like an old person's home or something. You know, that wasn't the case. She can take care of herself. It, it's not. It's a, not a matter of her mental faculties that she's missing. It yeah. it it seems more like it was a targeted thing, and. They wanted her to disappear. And if, if an old person is killed, it's usually in their home mm. and the body's right. found. Like you like I mean, honestly, an old person we doesn't go older person. Do, like an entire series on just like all of the Diana and like what this looks like. I could go on and on and on about the ways that like some of the info that's like just come at me out of nowhere, like from that side like that 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 there are that there is like coincidence and then there's just straight strange mm -hmm. yeah. and some of this is like unexplainable for anyone to be able to like to know that like she had better vision in one eye than the other and so when they swung at her and hit her she could only see one side was fuzzy and the other side was clear like who makes that up? And so it just all, I feel like if this road, like where we're at right now, like if that doesn't mean anything, like we won't, I won't, I won't let this go. So I feel like I'll continue to like, kind of just dig and pull at it until something someday comes of it. I just feel like somebody has to be keeping it out in the open. So we definitely need to make a Facebook group we could link it and stuff and like definitely need to be like organizing like a search figuring yeah. out a time and a day that like at any point that a group of people could all meet and go and search out there with me so that it's just that can be a closed book instead of me spending six more months trying to be like let's go look i just have one day a bunch of us go we like cross it off and all the eyes have been on it and now we know, and I know that that was thoroughly searched. No worries. You do not need to go like beaver dam diving again. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> as much fun as it may be. Yeah, like like I will. I won't stop until uh, until that's done. And bringing help in to do that would be a lot easier for all of us involved. I think that my fiance is tired of me asking to buy a paddle boat. I think that every friend I have on Facebook, when they post pictures in a canoe, I type, is that your canoe? <laughs> is that how bad I want to borrow their canoe? And everybody is now used to it. They're like, no. And so I just, we have to figure I'm, out. How I'm to sure we could get a hold of a canoe or a kayak or something without a problem. Honestly. Well, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't... Rent them from Ski Rack Sports. There you go. 30 bucks a day. There you go. Easy as. You can also rent uh, metal detectors too. Open river water. So I haven't done that because I'm worried that if I put the canoe in at the boat landing and I don't have experience canoeing, I will be a missing person because the <laughs> canoe will go swept down the stream to the dam and I won't be able to stop it. And I won't, I'll only have Emily with me 
and then it'll be me and Emily floating away. So until I have like a like legitimate search going, we decided to kind of like stay safe. Right, right. So <laughs> let us know, you know, when when you want to do this and what we can do to help you and we'll certainly be there for you. Yeah, absolutely. And just, of course, like, I'd love to know whatever comes of any of it, if we can get in touch with Paul or if there's anyone else that, I don't know if the state police will even talk to us, but I'd love to talk with them. Should like, do that. I'd love to know at least, like, what kind of dogs were brought out there. It looks and like... We have permission to go out there with our own dogs if we wanted to. It you says Piscataquis... Piscataquis Sheriff's Department is the ones that are in charge of the investigation. So that's who I guess yeah, you'd have to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of easy. Small town. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go find her. Um, yeah. No, I think that we have to. For sure. No, I, I think yeah. that especially with the people that, that are on our page, I think there'd be more than a few willing people to 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 come and help out. Yeah, and I mean obviously um like I use this as almost like my fun time. This is what I do when I'm not working that makes me feel like not a mom. I do the Diana search. Um but I'm always like if there are other missing persons cases that you guys are like we are researching <laughs> I would love to just dive into something else to get myself out of this rabbit hole. So I know we talked about Ayla Reynolds and like, that's going to be um, forever on everyone's minds, but mm -hmm. yeah. Main missing persons cases is like become a thing, I guess. <laughs> how did you find our, <laughs> how did you find our page by the way? So, um, I was going off that whole, um, how does a missing persons case use a psychic? And I was on Facebook and I went to the Ayla Reynolds missing persons page and I was searching keywords in the Ayla Reynolds page because that's one of like Maine's biggest missing persons page. And I found a post about um, Kimberly Moreau and I have my best friend Brittany lives in Rumford and she it she. <laughs> She went to the police station earlier this year because she found bones that washed down the hill at her house. There was like a big water thing that came down the hill and bones went in her driveway. And she found this big long bone and she thought it was the same as her femur bone. And so she packaged it up and went to the sheriff's department and thought that she had solved Kimberly Moreau. It was a cow. And I was like, what? I was like, you did not put that bone in a bag and bring it there. And she's like, yeah. I was like, so beyond that, I found that a post shared from someone in the Kimberly Moreau group that there was something about locating the lost. And I just saw it there and I was like, what is that? I was like, that's what I, that's what I need. If there was anybody in the state that's gonna even have any tips for me as to like where, what to do from here, that was the first thing I found. And so I messaged you and I asked, like, I know this is an old post. I think it was like 2016 or 2018, it said. And I was like, I don't know if you still do this, but I need help. And yeah, like I just just researching, trying to figure out, are there people in the state of Maine that work on missing persons cases that, so I'm not like wandering aimlessly forever on this. And I at least feel like, like you're saying, if you have a connection to somebody who has a dog who could come out there and search for me, if I decide that is an easy trip to do this fall and it's dry and we want to check that off the list, like that's like, even just one thing off the checklist is like amazing at this point to be able to say, even if only that one person comes through to help me check that, then that was worth it, you know? So I just have been searching the internet, trying to find anything. And obviously you can't find much on Diana. 
Yeah, it's it, very. That's very one of the things that, that really, really sucks about stuff like this is because it's it's very obvious that you're super passionate about this, and you have to imagine how many other people are out there like in this sort of situation that someone that's missing and they're passionate about trying to to find answers and there's like no yeah. resources for them, right? No one's around to give them an answer or even someone else to talk to about it. So. Yeah, nothing. And for me to even know that there's somebody around here that trains cadaver dogs who may be willing to help, they should go say no. But like, I have, there's so few people to ask that, yeah, there's, they're really, honestly, I'm surprised there's not something more. And like, I'm right. just like literally at the point where it's like, what you guys are doing is more than what anyone else is doing. So like, this is the start. Yeah, awesome. We're, we're happy to help. Yeah, yeah. As, as much as we can. If you have any information about the disappearance of Diana Esty, please contact Scataquah County Sheriff's Department at 207-564-3304. You can also leave us an anonymous tip here on our page or email us at Locating the lost ones at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for listening. The search for five year old Taylor, Taylor Williams led investigators to Alabama this week. So we have some breaking news from Florida. An arrest has been made. Tonight, in connection after years of agony, a glimmer of hope for the family. Investigators spent hours searching through this house off Pennsylvania Avenue. What could be a major development in the search for missing Alabama teenager. Tonight, a stunning twist in the search for Taylor. Somebody out there knows something. They want to lay him to rest their way, not by somebody else's way.